The following technical support video will highlight the different software features when using the Roland Cut Studio software to do a print cut application using inkjet transfer papers in the multi-rip hybrid software. To begin with, we're going to use this fire mask picture that I got from Great Dane Graphics and we are going to bring it into Cut Studio. To start off with, we want to set up our Cut Studio and our print cut application. To do that, all you have to do is click on File and select the Print Cut option. It's going to begin by starting off and defaulting to 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. In this case, we're going to use an 11 by 17 sheet of paper to gang up as many of these fire mask designs as we possibly can for a left chest design. So we're going to go ahead and click File, and we're going to go down to Printing Setup. The printing setup will give us our margins based on how far the margins are from the edges of the registration dots to the edge of the paper. And then the crop marks talking about the centering of it from the different sides. These are all defaulted for 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. You can't just go ahead and type in 11 and 17 and have them change here. First have to change your printer. So we'll go to the printer again. We're going to use the Multi-Rip Stylish Pro 4800 which is a hybrid printer and we're going to change our paper setting. We're going to scroll down and we're going to choose tabloid 11 by 17. Go ahead and hit OK. Now our paper has grown on here. All we need to do is change our crop marks. So we know that the width of the paper was 11 inches, so we'll just type 11 and hit tab and it'll already default to where we're going to move the crop marks on the bottom and then on the top. I'm going to type in 17 and hit tab and it'll set that up. Now we'll go ahead and click OK, and you'll notice that the top crop mark had moved up farther. Once we have that up, now we're going to uh, import our design. A couple ways you can import, you can go up to click File and go down to Import, where there's also a hot button up at the top called Import. Click on Import, brings it up, we'll scroll through, find our graphics. You notice the different graphic files that can be found are bitmaps, JPEGs, a uh, stick a plus file which is a Roland proprietary formatted file and a AI or EPS file. In this case we're going to use the fire mask which is a JPEG file. We'll click on that and we'll bring it in. Now obviously we want these to be three inches high. The graphic goes outside our 11 by 17 sheet of paper. A couple ways you can tell the size. First if you look down towards the bottom you'll see that the size is already listed for us right here. So it's 12.115 by 12.656. We need to change that. A couple ways we can do it. We can just click on the graphic, right click, and go down to properties. Or you can also click on the properties hot button up at the top of the page. It'll bring up the size of our graphic. In this case, we're going to do a 3 inch wide graphic for a left chest. And as long as we have the keep aspect button, it'll keep everything in proportion for us. So go ahead and hit OK. Our graphic now shrinks. A couple of things, you can either pick up and move this graphic by selecting on it and holding it down on the left key and dragging it to wherever we want it to go. You could also just go up and click on the move button and it will move it to the bottom corner. The problem with the move button is it's going to overlap on our registration marks. We don't want to necessarily have that happen. So we'll set it right there. Now what we need to do is we need to create our cut lines for this. We could go ahead and multiply because we're going to put as many of these on one sheet of paper as possible to get the most value out of our transfer paper. Yeah, so what I need to do is create my cut lines for this. If I'm going to do this on light transfer paper, I would go ahead and mirror it first though. So I can come up to the top, click down, object, and go down to mirror. It would then mirror my design for me. Mm. I didn't want it mirrored and I was doing it on a dark transfer, I would not have done that step. In this case, we're going to do it onto a dark transfer paper, so we'll undo it and bring it back. Now our design's here. What we're going to do is create our cut line for that design. You want to create your cut line before you do any type of multiplying. Otherwise, any cleanup work that we're going to have to do that you'll see in just a minute is going to be multiplied by the numbers of the designs that you duplicate it by. So we'll go up. You can either click on Object and go down to Image Outline. Or again, you can right click and go down the image outline. It'll bring up our graphic. Any part of this area in the graphic that is a light color is something that the cutter is going to cut out. We don't necessarily want all this stuff cut out because there's some yellow in the flames and stuff like that we want to keep. So we'll grab our image, 
slider, and we're going to slide it to the right. If you slide it to the left, it's going to take even more of the design away or cut it away. Slide it too far to the right, and you're going to watch the edges get really jagged. So I recommend never going all the way to the right. We'll move it just a little bit right there, and we'll go ahead and we'll extract our contour lines. Now that we've extracted our contour lines, you're going to notice that these parts in the center is still going to want to cut out. We're going to have to delete those cut lines. We'll do that once we have it here. You'll notice our cut lines again show up in blue. What we're going to end up doing to remove that is go up to the top. We're going to click on Object, and we're going to break Polyline. What that's going to allow us to do is it'll, it'll allow us to delete an entire line that has been completely connected. A couple ways, you can just come over here right click on the individual lines and continue to hit delete. If you have multiple ones and you want to make it a little bit easier, as long as you don't highlight all of the nodes of the lines, it will not delete that complete system. So all we did is we highlighted all of the center ones. Now we'll just go ahead and click delete. Now we have our cut line ready. What we're going to want to do as well is we're going to want to select both the cut line and the graphic. So we're going to click on the outside left click, highlight both of them. Now we will go up to the top and we're going to multiply. We'll go to the edit button. Scroll down, click to multiply copy. Now we can set up the numbers that we're going to do. In this case we're going to multiply this three of them going across and we're going to want them four high. You can change the spacing as you want as well. Just got to be a little bit careful when you start getting too close to spacing uh, as the might get to overlapping cuts. Just go ahead and click OK. And you're going to watch our design multiply. But the trick with it also was, is we also multiplied the blue cut line. Makes life a lot simpler. Once we have all of that done, now what we can do is we can go up, click on File, and now we're going to go down to Print. Window is going to come up. We're going to choose the Multi Rip Stylish Pro 4800. Click on Properties. Go down to Advance. Now you'll see that our paper size is 11 by 17. That's what we're printing on. We will scroll down. We're going to use our transfer ink. We're not doing dye sublimation in this case. With the hybrid, you need to select which ink and what media type you're going to use. You can also go to Transfer Graphics and choose one of our media types of our transfer papers. There's seven different ones down here. Since this is a graphic, transfer graphic is really the best one to go with. We could go with opaque transfer graphic as well since that is a dark transfer paper. And that's what we're going to use. Once you have all of that set up, I'm going to highly recommend you not mirror imaging your design in the RIP because it will also mirror image the registration marks. If we move that top registration mark over to the right, the optical registration cutter will not find that mark. So we'll just go ahead, hit OK, OK, and we're going to send this job to the printer. Now, what I'm going to do is show you in the printer standpoint what it, the job looks like once it's already been sent. So that way you can see that it doesn't print any of these lines with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the RIP bring up the RIP interface, you'll see as the job begins to process it'll run through you'll get your status message. Since this is a fairly decent sized file, we can click on the incoming jobs you can see that this job is 49 megabyte file. So it can take a minute or two to print out that. If you want this file to be smaller you'd want to decrease the resolution size of the picture. For the purpose of this video, we'll go ahead and pause this while it begins the processing to keep the time of the video shorter. Now that the design is done processing, we can go to the Process Jobs tab. We want to double click on the file name, and then come over and click on the number one, and you're able to preview the job. You can see that all of our uh, designs show up inside this. If you want to look at it even larger, we can click on the larger size, and you can notice that it's not going to print any of our cut lines. Once we have that done, We'll go back into the Cut Studio software, and now we need to send the cut file once we have the paper lined up with it. What we can do is turn around and go click Cutting, and we can send it to the Roland GX24. Go ahead, click OK, and that's all it takes. And these are highlight the main features of the Roland Cut Studio software. If you have any questions, please contact your distributor. Thank you.